Join me on a sci-fi culinary adventure. So I have two Star Trek cookbooks, one from the 90s and one from 2022. And so what I'm going to do is make the same meal from each book and compare them and see how it is. So my first meal that I want to start off with is a classic Klingon delicacy that most fans would know of for sure is gach. And uh, one of the books also has a recipe for grapak sauce, which you're supposed to serve with it, but um, one of the other books does not have that recipe. So we'll make an extra thing for that. Um, the other thing that we're gonna make that is in both is blood wine. One is a mocktail and the other is a cocktail. So I find that interesting. We have one um, more universal Anyone can have it, children, whatever, blood wine. And then we have a more adult blood wine. Uh, so before I get into the recipes and the cookbooks, let me show you my um, outfit because I actually wore a Star Trek related thing, but it's on the bottom half of my body and uh, you're not going to see it for most of the video or any of the video. So might as well show it off now. That was poor planning on my part. I uh, put my outfit together before knowing how I wanted to frame the video. Uh, this video was filmed last October, by the way. That's why there's a jack-o'-lantern in the background. I sometimes have issues with starting things and not finishing them, and this video is one of those times. So these are the two cookbooks I'll be referencing. This one is from 1999, and this one is from 2022. So the one from 1999 is written by Ethan Phillips and William J. Bernies. So Ethan Phillips is Neelix. On Voyager, he is the chef or cook character. So Voyager can't have um, constant food replicators running because that's a waste of power for them because they are lost in the Delta Quadrant. And so I think most of the people on board have like food vouchers for the replicator. But obviously once those are used up, you have to go to the commissary where Neelix is making food. William J. Bernies is a Star Trek fan who also has a uh, publishing and author experience. So uh, the book was basically a combined effort of a actual Star Trek character and a person who is a Star Trek fan that has a lot of uh, publishing experience. So the cookbook from 2022 is by Chelsea Monroe Cassell. She's made other um, nerdy cookbooks, such as a World of Warcraft cookbook, Elder Scrolls, Star Wars, a bunch of other nerdy cookbooks. And so she combines her knowledge of food and her love of sci-fi to make all these really cool, um, really interesting recipes. I say that because even though the older book is really cool that it has somebody that actually was on a Star Trek series working on it. This one is definitely more from the perspective of a chef. It, just from the intricacies of the recipes from what I've seen, in my opinion. So let's go through what I'll need. Um, we'll start with the 1999 one first. Something I forgot to mention about Ethan Phillips is that he was born into a restaurant family. His father actually owned a famous steakhouse in Manhattan. And he's not just an actor, but an author as well of a play. And when it comes to Star Trek, he has not just been in Voyager, but Star Trek Next Generation and Star Trek Enterprise as well. <laughs>
chill, which it doesn't say in the cookbook how long to chill the noodles, but I feel like a half hour is good enough. So while it's chill, we're going to make something else that is in the cookbook that I didn't mention. Prune juice cocktail. So one of the running gags or jokes within Star Trek is Worf's love of prune juice. And so Worf finds prune juice the drink of warriors. And so we're going to have the drink of warriors as well. So the prune juice cocktail recipe within this cookbook says to combine um, half a glass of prune juice and half pink grapefruit. So instead of getting a grapefruit juice, I got an actual grapefruit. So <laughs> I have prune juice and then we're going to squeeze a grapefruit. Cheers. Here we have our prune cocktail concoction. My cat decided to say something. Okay. Hi. All right. Yeah, no, I know. I know. Drink of warriors. <laughs> okay, it's not awful, but like <laughs> that's that's a lot. <laughs> the thing is, I like prunes. I actually really like prunes. I'm just really nervous about eating too many of them for obvious reasons. But yeah, this is um interesting. So aside from the running joke being that Worf likes prune juice, which is normally, you know, for when you have irregularity issues, digestive issues. <laughs> Aside from that running joke, um, it's also the running joke of just that it's something human that he likes, which he doesn't like very much human things. Even though he has joined Starfleet, he is very much Klingon and is very prideful of his Klingon traditions and ways. Slim similarly to Spock, he also is very much into Starfleet and his uh, duty to Starfleet. He just is also very much prideful about his Vulcan traditions and Vulcan ways. Cheers. <laughs> So I have my first gah dish ready. And so let's try the 1999 gah. It is um, a lot of sesame, soy sauces, basically a chilled noodle dish. That's good. Um, I would say like this would be really good with like a peanut sauce. Like if you've ever had chilled peanut noodles, this like just a little, like some kind of peanut sauce in here be so good i would also chill it a little bit more because it didn't cool down as much as i hoped but still really good i'm happy with my gal very happy with it i think what it needs is like um this nori rice seasoning it's got some uh, seaweed, sesame seeds, uh, sugar, salt. Oh yeah, now it's perfect. Mm -hmm. That's what it needed. What about that rice seasoning? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so good. On to the blood wine. But I'm actually going to eat this. It's good. So I got my mocktail blood wine. 
And uh, I really love the clotted blood effect that the cut up raspberries give. It's really cool. So let's give her a taste. That's delightful. I mean, it's cranberry juice, grape juice, and cut up raspberries. It's a delightful, sweet, juicy cocktail. Cheers. So here is my gach and grappach sauce all mixed together. So the gach didn't turn out as I wanted it to. You're supposed to like put it into a piping tube and like basically make meat noodles or meat tubes, but that didn't work out. So I just dumped the mixture, like the beef mixture into the simmering water and then sifted it out and got this. I think it looks really like good. Well, you know, like it's supposed to look. It's supposed to look gross. We're gonna ignore that. There was a cat hair. I don't even know how it got there. <sighs> I'm trying to really get the flavors of it so I could describe it. I'm trying to compare it to something that I've had before. Cause I think I can. Okay. It's kind of like 
An Asian style hamburger helper. Um, I say, I say that because the beef, the like beef cornstarch concoction, giving very hamburger helper. Um, mixing hamburger helper with like noodles is good as well. So like these udon noodles meet that requirement, but also it, um, it has like that soy sauce flavor coming through from the raw pak sauce and the sesame oil, which the cooking ingredients, uh, cooking ingredients, the cooking instructions on the udon noodles said to add uh, sesame oil. So yeah, the, there's some Asian flavors coming through from the recipe, but yeah, it's, it's kind of giving me a bit uh, spicy hamburger helper. I think spicy because I added, added the red pepper flakes, which I'm really happy I did. I feel like otherwise it would be really, really bland, but yeah, um, I think it's good. Yeah, definitely spicy um, Asian hamburger helper is what it's giving. Um, the brown sugar for sure, it's giving a, a bit of sweetness. I would say I burned off most of like the beet juice. Yeah, I'm really happy with this. So I'm gonna pull myself away from the gras and gras pak sauce. And uh, I will say, I really like this recipe a lot. Um, I said earlier in the video that the recipes in the second cookbook, uh, the more current one, are more intricate, more flavorful. I like this recipe of ga more than the first one, for sure. This is really good. So the blood wine from the first book was a mocktail. This is actually an alcoholic blood wine cocktail. It has a bunch of stuff in it that seems questionable. Prune juice and whiskey, rum and wine. So let's get into it. So here we have my blood wine, and I will say I'm not excited about this. <sighs> I never thought I'd mix prune juice and alcohol. That does not seem like a good mixture at all. <laughs> it smells like a lot of things. You know what? Hold on. Let me... Give it a little mix. <sighs> mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, wow. Mm. Has a kick. Has a kick to it. I mean, <clears throat> I guess that's accurate. It's blood wine. If a Klingon drinks it, it's probably not that enjoyable. Oh, oh, that fireball, that fireball really coming through. Ugh. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to finish this. I might just dump it. I can't. This is... <laughs> This is unreasonable. <laughs> Rum, whiskey, wine, prune juice? Mm. Honestly, minus the prune juice, I'd probably make this again. I don't think alcohol and prune juice should ever be in the same cocktail. <laughs> You're just asking for trouble. But uh, yeah, minus the prune juice, I think I would make this again because it's kind of um, giving me 
a bit mulled wine vibes. I will say that prune juice really is a kick. So I'm, get, I'm getting a lot of the cinnamon whiskey and prune juice. So next time, minus prune juice, I think it would be a nice fall time drink because the cinnamon whiskey is definitely giving me fall vibes. But um, I would not recommend this. <laughs> This was a fun experiment I would not recommend. So that was a fun culinary adventure. Thank you for coming along with me on that journey. I'm definitely down to make more Star Trek food. Uh, a dish that I'm thinking about making next is a Vulcan one called Plumique Soup. But before I go, uh, let me show you the official Star Trek spirits that are behind me. Firstly, we have here uh, the official Star Trek blood wine. And it has this really cool uh, red wax seal at the top. So these are going to be opened when me and my boyfriend are watching Star Trek together. Um, and not by myself while I film a YouTube video. But I just wanted to show them anyway because I think they're really cool. Here we have, what is it? Oh, yeah. Special Reserve, which we have the red wine version or... Old Vine Zinfandel. Then we have the other special reserve, which is a white or Sauvignon Blanc. Then we have a really cool one, which is the Chateau Bacard. Bacard has a vineyard and he produces Chateau Bacard. And so this is supposed to be that and it's actually produced from the actual French vineyard that the Picard vineyard is based on because his vineyard is in France and so this is where it would be made if he actually made the wine. <laughs> and then lastly we have Ten Forward which is Star Trek vodka. I really love the bottle of this. It's so cool. It's got all that nice detailing on the side. So like I said, thank you for watching and coming along with me on this culinary journey. Feel free to subscribe for more Star Trek food videos here and there. Uh, I say here and there because I do not post regularly here on YouTube. I just post whenever I feel like it. So. <laughs> Uh, if you want to come along with me on that journey, feel free to subscribe.